Uh, my name is Josh Hare. We're in uh, beautiful Austin, Texas at Hops and Grain Brewing over on the east side. We started our brewery um, way, way back, but officially opened our doors in October of 2011. Started at that time because to me it was the right time. Uh, I had been through a bunch of different industries and loved them all, and beer was always a focal point of every industry that I was a part of. Uh, I didn't leave an industry that I hated. I just uh, found the piece of all the other industries that I really liked, and I decided to commit myself uh, to that piece of it. Um, the timing was perfect uh, in Austin because we were still very young and are still currently very young. Uh, but when we opened, there were only six production breweries that were actually operating. Uh, now I think we've got 13 or 14, um, but even still, you know, per capita, that's so much lower than most states. Um, and we chose East Austin specifically because it's my favorite place in Austin. It's uh, filled with more art studios and more art culture, I think, than anywhere else in Austin. Uh, and it's really supportive of what we're trying to do in being a, a really a community-focused and community-minded brewery um, that also cares about our impact. Uh, and so joining with a bunch of other artists here to, we believe at least, express ourselves through liquid, um, we feel like we're in the right neighborhood for it. So we, uh, we can three of our beers now. Um, it was a, a plan from the very beginning, part of our business model. Um, we kind of approached it from three different aspects, uh, the same three that we really approach uh, all of our production and decisions through. Uh, and those are the environmental impact, community impact, and then uh, our craft, our industry impact. Uh, so from those three aspects, uh, we chose, for the environment, we chose cans, uh, not necessarily because they're the most recyclable or because they require less energy to recycle, but because ultimately we as consumers are the ones that have to recycle these things. Uh, and if you can provide your product in a container that's the easiest to recycle, then the chances of it actually getting into the recycle chain uh, are drastically increased. An empty can, I think everyone can admit, is much, much lighter than an empty glass bottle. There's no chance of it breaking. You can step on it and crush it down to practically nothing. It'll fit in your pocket. Uh, so we admit that all of us are lazy as humans, and if we want to recycle our beer, we've got to put it in something that we're all going to actually get it to a recycle bin with. Um, so that was the environmental side of it. From a community standpoint, uh, we're outside all the time, and we try to support as many outdoor uh, activities and events as possible. Uh, glass is prohibited in most outdoor spaces in Austin, so from a, an approachable and accessible standpoint, it was a better container. Uh, and then in terms of our industry and our craft, uh, we really want to present our beer in the best package and best form possible. Uh, we drink it here as fresh as it can be, and we want to make sure that when it goes out to all of our consumers, it also tastes as close to what we taste right out of the tank as possible. Um, and due to the lack of headspace, the lack of uh, oxygen and, and light ingress, uh, cans were just a better storage container, so trying to ensure that the quality and experience that our customers get is the same as what we get at the brewery. We started uh, back about a year ago, we started barrel aging some of our beer. So something that's very popular um, in the brewing industry uh, is to take beer either finished or almost all the way finished through fermentation, put it in oak barrels, some whiskey, some wine, some rum, some port, uh, all kinds of different barrels can be used for this. And then aging your beer in it to pick up more flavor, complexity, uh, things like that. And we, we started doing that barrel aging early on, uh, very interested in it because I think the flavors that you can contribute are really interesting and just another dynamic of you know, your brand. Um, and so we launched a series of beers that we call Del Roble, which in Spanish translates to of the oak. Um, so all of the beers that come from our Del Roble series all have a uh, pretty heavy influence by oak. Um, we also have another series of beers called Volumes of Oak that is only aged in oak barrels. So these are beers that are finished fermenting, put in oak, the traditional kind of method, uh, and then left to age. But the Del Roble series is something completely different in that right out of the kettle, after the boil is done and we've cooled down through a heat exchanger, we knock out right into oak barrels uh, and let the entire fermentation take place in oak. Um, something that there's no way it's impossible to recreate that in stainless. Uh, every batch is definitely different than the one before, even though the recipe is always the same. And that variability is something that's really, really exciting um, because it gets people coming back because they want to taste what the next batch of one of our Del Roble beers tasted like because they know it's not going to be exactly the same as the one before. Uh, and the progression and kind of marriage of aging with oak, right? developing your recipes around the, the oak barrel that it's going into rather than just making a beer, throwing it in a barrel and picking up some bourbon character. Um, 
So the Del Robo has been fun. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. Uh, it's very small scale, um, but they're very popular. I love hops for a lot of different reasons. One, uh, I love the industry that is hop growing. Uh, the agricultural aspect of um, small six, seven generation old farms that are growing stuff specifically for the craft brewing industry. Um, connecting with the supply chain is something that's really hard, I think, in a lot of industries, but in brewing, we actually have the opportunity to go visit farms if we wanted to and see where the hops are that we're using or coming from. Uh, as a tiny, tiny brewery like we are, uh, in the grand scheme of things, we still have that ability. Um, and on top of that, hops are something that have been used in beer and are really a necessity if you want to balance out the sweetness. So you've got to have them there. Every beer that you drink has probably got a hop addition or two at least, um, if not three triple hops brewed. Um, but we love them because it's a, it's a complex plant. And when you use it in a way that really expresses its flavor uh, and aromatic compounds and the oils that go into that that are the most volatile um, to the point where when you open a bag of hops, you've already lost uh, a good amount of essential oils that have volatilized with oxygen. Um, and so being able to capture those flavors and aromas uh, is something that I don't think our industry uh, has really fully embraced yet. But uh, for a while we were on this bitterness race, uh, pissing contest of sorts to see who could make the most intense, you know, tooth melting uh, beer out there. And now I think uh, we're into a little bit different method and process of let's really capture and, and be, you know, it's funny, but be really inefficient with our hop usage and you know, find varieties that are really rich in oils and really dank in that aromatic and flavor department, put them into our beers in a way that doesn't contribute bitterness. It just contributes this really, really cool mouthfeel and flavor. Um, and to me, it's more changing people's uh, perception of what a hoppy beer is. Um, hearing people say, I don't like hoppy beers, you know, trying to understand what they mean by that. Most of the time, it means they don't like bitterness uh, in beers. And so it's fun to change that mindset. We have a good, good friend of ours that uh, brews at a brew pub on Burnett Road called Pint House Pizza. He moved down here from Colorado. Um, I have also moved down here from Colorado, so I think uh, that front range mentality seems to draw people together. But uh, Joe Moorfeld is his name. Um, really great guy, great brewer. And we partnered up about a month and a half ago uh, to create what we kind of describe as our, um, you know, our, our salute and celebration of the hop plant. Um, one of the varieties that we've been playing around with recently is Mosaic, which is a fairly new hop variety uh, that was part of a, a few years long breeding program uh, that ultimately found uh, a parent connection between Nugget and Simcoe, two hop varieties. Um, those were bred together through a really elaborate breeding program and produced Mosaic. Um, it's an incredible hop, very unique, very pungent. Um, and so we did a beer that we called Hop Screpency uh, that utilized all three of those hop varieties uh, in different ways. So we did a, a base beer, just a pale ale. Um, all of the additions throughout the kettle were a blend and mix of those three varieties. Uh, it fermented out and then we filled three firkins um, before we had dry hopped the beer. One firkin was dry hopped with Simcoe, one with Nugget, one with Mosaic. And then we did a blend of all three of those hops and dry hopped the base beer that was already or still in the, the fermenter. Um, and then we served all four of those beers uh, as well as another one that we uh, was, was a little bit more off the wall. But uh, we served those in an event. Uh, and the fifth one, the kind of uh, dessert aspect of that was we took the, the base beer hop discrepancy and blended it 50-50 with uh, our alteration, which is a German-style brown ale that had been aging in Chardonnay barrels with uh, tart chairs with strawberries, sorry. Uh, and we blended those two together and created a really, really interesting kind of unique flavor. Um, hoppy and tart and just, yeah, really unique. So. We are currently, the, the biggest thing that's happening with us is with the legislative change currently in Texas, we are moving over to a brew pub permit. So we've got all of our paperwork in place with the TABC, uh, started construction on a new tap room, um, and, and our focus is going to be maintaining the distribution that we have, but really devoting most of our efforts and growth from this point forward to uh, the tap room and brew pub element of, of what we're planning to do. No food or anything like that, but uh, a real focus on the consumer experience, which we believe uh, is best had at the point of production. Um, and so we're going to maintain our distribution because we really value all the accounts that sell our beer. Um, but we're really, really going to commit a lot of space, resources, and money to uh, growing the, the on-premise and um, growler, you know, package-to-go beer side of our business.
keep drinking local beer. <laughs> it's always my parting word. <laughs> mm -hmm.